Hi guys, um, today I decided to make a video about uh, my Crossman Model 2289 um, backpacker or uh, uh, doomsday bug out kit, whatever. Um, so now, um, me and this uh, other guy on uh, YouTube, uh, he goes by the name of uh, Viva, Viva La Bam, You're Dead. Um, I've been talking about these kind of carbines and 1322s and all sorts of crossmen, you know, uh, kinds of pistols. And um, he was going to buy one of these things, and I've never owned one with a, you know, with a stock. Ever since I was a kid, I've, I've always owned the 1377s or 1322s. Um, the pistol, and uh, just shot him that way, and uh, just got used to that, and I never really decided to buy one of the stock, which, you know, I'm glad I, I decided to buy this. So anyway, with all the talking, we uh, basically came up with a thing that, well, he'll spend a hundred, run about a hundred dollars, and I'll spend run about a hundred dollars, and we'll both mod each, you know, each one of our uh, backpackers and see what we can come up with. So <clears throat> this is the modding that I've done with mine uh, for run about a hundred bucks. Um, to start with, I uh, I tote it in this uh, bag, which I made out of an old. Uh, you know, Woodland BD, Woodlands BD, BDU shirt. Yeah, uh, a little bit of a tongue twister for me today. Um, you can see there where that's actually the button hole where the cuff, you know, used to be and all that stuff. So I just sewed that shut. Uh, so this is uh, the arm part of the shirt. Um, basically, folded that over so I could put a rope through it and voila, there you go. There's your tote bag. So that's a uh, pretty nifty deal. I like that a lot better because you can just grab and go. Now the reason why I had to make a new tote bag for it was because after all the modifications on it, it actually got a little longer so it wouldn't fit in the actual bug out uh, bag that Crossman supplies with it. So <clears throat> um, let's start uh, with the stock part. This is uh, something that really didn't cost me much money because well, it was just an old shirt and a bit of Velcro. And uh, luckily, I uh, I do know how to use a sewing machine. My mother is a seamstress, so um, after years of watching her, and you know, I've uh, well, you know a couple of times I've had to make things like this for my rifles and stuff, or even bags to put them in and stuff. And uh, it comes in handy just learning how to use a sewing machine a little bit. You don't even have to get really super proficient with it. But anyway, between her and uh, you know, with her, uh, show, you know, coaching me a little bit on how to sew some of the stuff and you know, with my ideas on how I wanted to, you know, plan it out, we got this made. So, uh, it took a bit of patience. Um, let me get rid of the, the parachute cord here. So now, this is really my actual bug out kit f per se. This is stuff that I just threw in just to, you know, give you an idea. You can throw some stuff in there. Like here, I, I keep my pellets and a compass, that, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's got a pocket on the outside. And uh, on the inside, I've got a zippered bag, so I had to make a pocket on the inside um, because there's that you know that space inside the stock you can use for storage. So I've got my Leatherman in there. Um, that's you know what I threw in there. You can you, you know you do have a bit more space in there. You can throw some more stuff. So, but uh, it's really cool because the whole thing is just attached with Velcro, as you can see here. So you can uh, pull it apart. You know you have your normal stock. And uh, here's the bag, and uh, so you can wash it and uh, you know put it right back again, and no worries. And you know if it gets completely worn out sooner or later, you can uh, make another bag. Um, and uh, you know it's a snap to put back in because you know you just have two two parts that you have to velcro the bottom part and then uh, the top. You know the, the 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 top part here by the buttstock, and it doesn't affect anything. You know it actually feels very comfortable. I really like that. So. There might be an idea for you guys that you know like to mod your, your stocks and stuff. That's something different that uh, I've never really seen. Anyway, back to the actual carbine. Um, I'm going to get closer here so you can see some of the stuff. We'll start from top to bottom. Uh, I got one of these uh, Tasco scopes at uh, Walmart. Um, dead cheap, seven bucks, run about there. Um, so it comes with the rings. And uh, you know, I wanted, I wanted something better than the, the iron sights that you get with this rifle, especially you know being up close with the stock, um, it really kind of makes it difficult for uh, for you to aim. So I I, I like crosshairs. Um, 
So this scope is dead cheap and you know they work really well. Now the, the scope base there that mounts on the barrel, I got that from Pyramid Air for about 20 bucks including sheep and including shipping. Um, you'll notice though that I have the that spacer in between the barrel and the the, the actual pump tube at the bottom. And um, I put that there because it helps it canter that, that twisting that the barrel does. Um, it's it all kind of acts like a shim, so that's a that's a good deal. Um, I got really tired of you know punching that pin out, so I went to the Ace Hardware store and I got a, a bolt and a nut. And the nut's got that uh, nylon lining on the inside, so once it tightens, it doesn't really loosen out. You know, so that's a good thing. Um, that sent me back about two dollars. I decided to paint it to, to match you know the theme of the stock. So the Jura coat. Um, that set me thirty bucks. Um, I'll set, that cost me about thirty bucks, but an actual, an actual, uh, uh, in actuality, was more like sixty dollars. But um, the only reason why I ordered it because a friend of mine decided to go. Well, I'll split the difference with you because he wanted to paint his uh, his rifle. So you know, I couldn't say no. Thirty bucks for me—that's cheap. So anyway. Uh, I got an air stripper from Melon Air. Uh, you can see there where I had to drill a hole and um, basically make a front post for that. Uh, that was pretty simple. Um, the internal workings of the trigger mechanism and the hammer springs and all that stuff, I did not change. I left them stock. Um, because you know what? These things uh, are actually pretty well built, so they will shoot forever, you know. Uh, if you don't change much on them. Um, you can see there the bolt probe, I extended that so I could push the pellet uh, past the port, uh, the, the air port. Um, so that took me a little bit, but uh, a little bit of ingenuity. There's videos on how to do that kind of stuff. Um, the one other thing that I did uh, definitely do is I, um, I uh, got a flat piston top, or flat piston head or however you want to call that from uh, Melon Air. That's uh, made out of Delrin. Um, the reason why I got that is because uh, I cronied the, the, the pistol or the carbine right off the bat and um, it was giving me low velocities. Um, the, stock, the stock carbine was only giving me an average of 430 feet per second with 10 pumps and an average of 480 feet per second with 15 pumps. Um, after I got the, the flat top piston on, know this that you know I had to I ordered the piston, but the actual valve I had to you know grind the the, the top of the valve and make that flat. Um, I also ported the valve so to give it a better airflow. So <clears throat> that's the only way that can work. You you can't just order a flat top piston and have a, basically a pointed valve. It's not going to work. Um, the other thing that you must keep in mind is uh, when you insert that that uh, flat top piston, um, deburr the inside of this tube very well so it doesn't grind anything on the on the seals um, because if it grinds the seals then you're going to start losing air and, and uh, little by little your seals are going to get shot a lot quicker. But you do a good job deburring and it will last uh, quite a while. and. Um, so now the velocities that I'm getting with the new flap top piston and valve, um, uh, average of 480 feet per second with 10 pumps and an average of 530 feet per second with 15 pumps. Now if you have a question about why am I going to 15 pumps, okay, I've been shooting these things ever since I was a kid, I've always shot them with 15 pumps. Um, I always like to push the limits on these things, and I'll tell you what, yeah, the manual says don't go past 10 pumps, but I have no problems with it, I've always gone past it, I've always gone to 15, I've never gone past the 15 because I think there is a, a crucial breaking point that soon enough you'll want to go 20, soon enough you'll want to go 25, and then before you know it you're going to blow up your gun or something stupid, or you're going to break the seals and they're going to split and all that stuff. But um, you know, I've always shot them at 15 pumps. It, it gives them the, the most velocity that it can, you know, it can, the most pressure it can handle and the most velocity that you'd want to shoot. Um, if you take a small game, you don't want to shoot these things at, at poor velocities. So the most you can get out of it, the better. <coughs> so, uh, 
there is that. I'll show you here just a quick print out of uh, some of the, the stuff that, you know, where I got them from and how much they cost. And that's an average on cost. So I'll run that list up. And uh, you can pause it on YouTube or whatever so you can read it. Uh, I'm not really fancy with the gizmos and like some other guys that, you know, are really good at writing this stuff and, I don't know, presenting it some other way. So, um, now if you're worried about uh, accuracy, I would say I've got decent accuracy. This is out to 20 yards. Um, you can see there that uh, that's with the pointed pellets. Also, the, the all the velocity readings that I got on the chrono are just using the the crossman pointed pellets that are supplied with with the with the bug out kit. Um, but up here, I shot a five shot group at 20 yards with um, the silver bears, and uh, I've always liked the silver bears for these kind of pistols. It seems like these kind of pistols love them. So you know, not bad, uh, not bad groupings up to 20 yards, and. Um, so you know, <clears throat> that's uh, that's my take on uh, on uh, the 2289 uh, backpacker. Um, I'm gonna put a link on uh, the end of this video, um, which will go to uh, Viva La Bam, your dad's uh, video, so you can compare the two and see what he's done. And, you know, see what I've done, and you can comment on both uh, our videos or however you want to comment. No big deal. But. Uh, there's a last look at the, this thing. So, if you've never modded one of these things, I really suggest uh, you go buy one, mod the thing, uh, take some targets, put it out in the woods, and uh, shoot them full of holes. Alright, bye.